Are you trying to move me out of five, you Billy? <laughs> on reach to the left, you said. Proper centre forwards, I said. Oh. <laughs> Online, he thought he was on a train. Online, it's black and white telly. <laughs> but he was top of the <laughs> housery. <laughs> <laughs> he was horrible to play against. You get one for England? I got one for England, yeah. Who's that against? Uh, Luxembourg. <laughs> All I do now is live on my past. <laughs> but it's so so long past that it's kind of hard to remember most Different moments. people will remember you as a footballer. You know, like... <laughs> Revenge. <laughs> Just get um, that dagger on no, your heart, no, will no, you? No, I'm the crisp bloke. <laughs> You're the crisp guy bloke. Flogs the crisps, but yeah, no, or the guy on the telly. But no, you've got to be of a certain age, obviously, mm. of which you're not. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, 21 pound a week. And then I signed as a professional when I was 18. Oh, no, no, no. What was, year was this? <laughs> late 70s. Late 70s. So that was still good money in 70s. the 70s. What, 21 pound a week? Well, it wasn't even that good. No, listen. Inflation and all that, man. Did you not get any money you for your bus pass? Inflation to get to five grand a week. <laughs> Did you not get any money for your bus pass as well? Oh, well, I get okay. that now. I'm about to get now, that. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now. Your bus yeah. do, you, do you get free uh, bus rides now? Not yet. What, what age is it? 65? What you think it is, is it? Anyway. So he tried to do me. Yeah. He offered me double money, so 10 grand a week. What? Who? Straight up to you at the time. But I'd just got into the England. I was just getting ah, England. Ah, you bursting. Exactly. So I ended up on, on, on 50 grand a week. Are <laughs> <laughs> you trying to move me out of five grand a week? So oh, every time I see him, I just yeah. laugh at him. He was at the World Cup no, only working with Tom Smart. never made it as a manager, paying him 50 <laughs> grand a week and putting him centre forward. <laughs> Can you imagine how <laughs> you're paying a 17 year old fullback <laughs> 50 grand a week? Uh, oh. Good times. Game's gone. So then, <laughs> the story goes on. Oh, God. So do you remember the, the whole time when um, you, have, you had to have so much English players yeah. for, the, for the quota? Mm. So Man City offered me five and a half year deal on 100 grand a week. At what age? I was old then. I was 26. I was oh, right. 26. <laughs> offered you? 100 grand a week, five and a half year deal. And I said no. Yeah, I said no. I, you did what? Yeah, exactly. Because I was number two behind Zabaleta. And I said no. You just wanted to play, didn't you? I, I mean, just wanted to play. That's what I mean. Love with it. Look at me. Have you so I'm not all about the money. Have you recovered from that decision yet? Why do you think I work for every <laughs> broadcaster? <laughs> <laughs> I went to Aston Villa. I went to Aston Villa. Oh, 120. No, 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 no. That was uh, less <sighs> money. But then we got relegated in the first season, so my, my wage is half. <laughs> <laughs> is that a serious question? Can you remember him as a player? What of course he can't. What year did you retire? <laughs> See, he can't. Well, from English football, 92. Oh, OK, yeah. I so I, sh I should have seen a little bit, but... How old were you? You didn't. At 94. <laughs> so the answer to the question is, no, you can't remember him. <laughs> All right, Alan, let's talk about Blackburn. Uh, Why, is it your number one for personal reasons? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should have flipped it around, really. That was number yeah. two and the other one. But yeah. we, we, were, we were petrified. We were nervous as hell. Take us through that day. Yes. Uh, we went for a walk in the morning, everyone, you could tell, I, even Kenny was a little bit nervous, despite he? what he, you could tell. And he was, he was our most experienced weapon, really. Did you always go for before. a walk in the morning? Yeah. Oh, that's, because you don't want to break routine. No, no, we always yeah. went for a walk in the morning. With the phones um, in? the hotel. Phones? Did you have mobile? With <laughs> the phones What in? was it, Nokia 8210? <laughs> what were you working with? The big one. The <laughs> So yeah, did you have a phone? You know, you go on your phone, and you're looking for. Yeah, they had the big chunky phones. Just they were just coming out then, weren't they? No, so did, you didn't have one on you, no. So you weren't looking at social media and all that. No, no. social media. Social media. Yeah. <laughs> 95. 94, 95. <laughs> Fantastic place. Brilliant. Intelligent. 
He came over at such a young age as well, didn't he? Yeah. Um, 16. He was this skinny, tiny little kid, wasn't he, when he, uh, when he arrived? But you could tell straight away the ability. I mean, he, uh, how comfortable on the ball he was and taking the ball under pressure, yeah. and all of those things. Yeah. His passing, his weight of pass. Yeah. You know what? It was actually strong as well. I remember trying to like burst past him one time. He just put his arm out and he was just well, like, whoop. Yeah. And? I won't be doing that again. And? And what? When he put his arm out, what, what did you do? Yeah, I, you I, I bought the I bought the foul. <laughs> <laughs> Was that cheating? You got it out of me in the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah I bought the foul. I was penalty taker for England for four years before I got one. And the first one was the really? first oh, yes. one I got was eight minutes to go, two one down, quarter final in the World Cup. All the best. That's Cameroon. <laughs> Talk me what was going through your mind then. You always give it this. Um, I'm Gary Lineker. I'm cold as ice. I've never that. said. So I'm someone who's Lineker. himself on the pitch. <laughs> let's, come on, let's have it right yeah. now. <laughs> that was the same time I <laughs> myself on the pitch. <laughs> What's going through? Metaphorically your mind? speaking. Um, I'm a bit like Alan, I used to practice all the time and I practiced the, the penalty that I was going to take in a match. Very similar technique to Alan, although a lot of the time I'd do it without a goalkeeper in there. Why was that? Um, for confidence and also because I used to practice the same, only one penalty. So therefore the keeper would just keep, and I don't want him where he saves five or six. So it's slightly different, but I understand his technique, which I also did on occasions. So I'd do that, I'd hit 50, 60, however many, every day. And then the day before the Cameroon game, we trained on the Napoli pitch and um, we'd finished training. I put the ball as Bobby Robson comes out. She says, you might want to think about your penalty practice. He says, we hear there's a Cameroon spy in the, in the ground. <sighs> so I said, oh, right. -o. So instead of taking loads of penalties in the place that I normally hit, which I'd already decided which was going to be keepers left, I hit 10 penalties maybe, all low to keepers right. Every single one, loads of keepers right. So, eventually, the first penalty for England, edge of the box, whacked me, down I went, looked up, ref went, penalty, I went, yes, and then I went, <laughs> 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 Right, okay. I remember g g walking to the spot and um, a strange thing went through my mind. I thought, God, my brother will be nervous. Because he's, you know, you know I, and he eventually told me he was hiding behind the sofa, couldn't watch. So I, I put it on the spot and I thought, right, just do what you've done in training. It sounds a bit mad, but I always used to aim just outside the right, of, the left-hand side of the post on that when I hit that penalty, because naturally with the right foot pen, it will mm. curl in. And also you always bottle it a little bit more. <laughs> so I did exactly that. Um, and as soon as I hit the ball, I could already see the keeper, funnily enough, going low to his right. Oh, now, I'll never know, I'll never know to this day. But anyway, so it's the most beautiful sight ever, isn't it? When you see the keeper going the other way right. and the ball sailing into the net and it's like... Breathe again. And then you go... <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm running off and then there's eight minutes to go. We go to extra time and at the end of the 90 minutes, Bobby Robson comes up and he runs over to me. He gets a big hug. He went, I told you, I told you. <laughs> Tell you what, I'm going to do something here that has never been done in Top of the Ten podcast history. Oh. Wow. I am going to insert Ian Wright <laughs> into this list. In fact, we're going to have 11. <laughs> we're going to have 11? I don't oh, think right. it changes things dramatically. <laughs> yeah. But we're going to bring in Ian Wright into the equation. So I'm asking for a top... It's not a top ten this week. <laughs> It's a top 11. Yes. I love Wright, you know, he's a great lad and we all do, but he was top of the <laughs> housery. <laughs> <laughs> he was horrible to play against. Yeah. He was, wasn't he? He's uh, in your ear all the time, yeah. seeing this, seeing that. He was he was nasty. Yeah. But he, he would openly admit that and say that was that was him. He's not only the person that would have performed massive <laughs> housery on the pitch, but he <laughs> loved it and boasts about <laughs> it even now, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. And I love that. Yeah, you know? that's great. He's like the Jamie Vardy of his, of of his day, yeah. you know, in the same sense that the fans will give him pelters and then when he scores, he'll go and do something. I'm still not forgiven <laughs> righty anyway. He dug me out on match of the day. Oh, go on. Do you remember? I've, I've told you a story, haven't I? When he was a pundit? When he was a pundit, yeah. And you were playing? At Aston Villa. He dug me out. Did you deserve it? Probably. Um, <laughs> People are saying that Villa will go down and when you look at this, you have to say that's right. You look at Michael Richards, his body shape's totally wrong. That's the captain there. He's got to make more of an effort. I had a ding Tell dong us. with him. Did you? Oh, Mike, was going back and forth. I deleted the tweets now. <laughs> <laughs> 
Micah, we have additional information here. <laughs> it was reported in the newspapers. Aston Villa defender Micah Richards has hit back at Arsenal legend Ian Wright for comments made during Monday night's edition of Mash of the Day. Monday night, it's unusual. Uh, former striker Wright hit out at Richards for his part in Norwich's opener as relegation threatened. Aston Villa suffered yet another defeat. <laughs> <laughs> That's the captain. He's got to make more of an effort than that, Wright said in his post-match analysis. <laughs> These are the reasons they're going <laughs> down! <laughs> Oh, oh come on! When I first come to do the put, I'm on with Ian Wright, aren't I? Oh right! Oh my god! Was it so, awkward? I've never been so nervous in my life. <laughs> he was lovely. It was, it was what, what do you say? Has he remembered? <laughs> shall, I, shall, shall I bring it up? Shall I try make light of did the you, situation? Did you, bring, did you bring it up? No, I left. Have it. you never mentioned it since? I, in all the time. I think Rich knows. Rich. Shall the, I tell you something the now? The next time you two are on together, I'm <laughs> believe you me, in the office, in up. the afternoon, oh. it is going to be raised, Micah. <laughs> Should play it on the show, they write his analysis. <laughs> and uh, there'll be no surprise to you guys who's the main centre forward. Aguero. Oh. Happy days. <laughs> so Henri's not the main centre forward. Oh, we like slightly to the left, yeah? yeah? slightly to the left, oh, yeah. Just you tell me. Main centre forward. Is? Kane. Kane, yeah? Come wow. on. Wow. All right. Interesting. OK. There's a player missing from the team that I thought would be in it. So, wait, 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 who's wait, 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 wait. Who, uh, who have you written down there? I haven't written anything. I've written your team down. All right, yeah, but who did you put centre forward? Look at him, he's so sensitive. No, I, I just moved Henri to the left. You said Henri. Yeah. I thought you meant him as your centre forward, so I put Henri there. Now you made me scribble it out, make a mess in my nice piece of paper. Who's he got in centre forward? Who the, who the, okay. Uh, Henri's to the left, you said. Proper centre forwards, I said. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot! <laughs> Serious. I was deadly serious. Why has he left out Ronaldo? <laughs> That's all I was thinking. He's left out Ronaldo for crying out loud. <sighs> How could I never? He, he, you never came to my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking like the best. Who's the best strikers around? This thing in the in the, in the thing. But, Come on. So it's who is it? Who do you think? Alan Shearer. He's put himself in. Only because you're the only team you'll ever play in that scored. I'd love goal. Imagine that team. That's full of goals, that team. No. Look yeah. at that team. I mean, you, you sit next to Roy. You, you like to do analysis as well, but you also feature a lot in clips, because you understand the importance of, of, of social media. Yeah. And you're obviously charismatic and very likable, may I say. Here, um, here. I, I, we, we, Sometimes, I don't know. He's said through Clem's teeth. Are you going to through Clem's <laughs> No, but, you know, it's... But personality is important as well, is what I'm saying. Yeah, of course. The way I see punditry is, if I'm at home, on a Saturday or Sunday, not working, who do I want to see? So... <laughs> <laughs> you don't Roy, Roy Keane... Yeah. Would be number one on my list, okay. Because you know he's going to be honest. Mm. He's going to bring the, the the drama, and he can do the the analytical side yeah. if he, if he wants. But a lot of the shows that he's on, mm. a Sunday is more about big debates. I knew we should have put Roy Keane in that top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I I actually seen when I first did punditry, everyone was too angry. Everyone was. Look at me, I've scored how many goals, I've won what... But for me, that was only one part of it. How can I come on mm. TV and be relevant, but not be as great as Alan Shearer? So I went with more a light-hearted approach, yeah. sort of witty, and stayed within what I know I was good at. Mm. If I try to debate with, with, with Alan, I could be right, but because he's Alan Shearer, People online would say, oh, Michael doesn't know what he's talking about. So there's ways of doing things. And I thought the whole punditry scene needs lighting up. And that's why I think see, Ian Wright's the, brilliant. Yeah, see, there's the difference. When you started as being a pundit, and certainly when I started, mm. you, online was never mentioned. Mm. No, no, never mentioned. Right. So what Mike has just said there, online, you'll be trending or you'll do it. Mm. Who the f 20, 
or 2006 or yeah. whatever it was. Did, when I did, did you start as a pundit? I did punditry for two or three years. Um, 95, yeah, so 95, 96 I did it, which was... It, didn't even, it wasn't it was, even an online, online, he thought he was on a train. Online, it's black and white telly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. You can listen to Match of the Day Top 10 only on BBC Sounds. Subscribe to the BBC Sounds YouTube channel to be the first to see more from us right here.